It's been described as Israel's big ears, a huge facility where it's claimed phone calls and emails from all across the Middle East and beyond can be monitored for intelligence. Hidden from prying eyes for decades in the desert, it's become a focus for investigative journalists. RT's Paula Slayer has more on who's listening in. Many Israelis have probably driven past here and not cast a second glance. A few satellite dishes outside a little-known town in the Negev desert. But this is no ordinary military base. This is the largest or largest equal spying facility that I've ever seen on Earth. And Hager should know. He's been studying signal intelligence or electronic spying for the last 25 years. A tip-off gave him access to people on the inside. No one had ever talked about or understood that there could be something of this scale in Israel. It had simply never come on the map, it had never been seen. But now it's showing up all over satellite images, with 30 different listening antennas directed high over the equator, each targeting a different dish in the sky. They take everything that's uh, passing over the satellite. The system simply doesn't discriminate and everybody listens to everybody. And that's a lot of listening. From this hub, every telephone call, every email can be intercepted. And according to Duncan Campbell, somewhere here along the coast north of Tel Aviv, large groups of people are listening in. Typically, you have large, windowless, what look like industrial warehouses, but with massive security. There's, I've seen many such places across the United States, and several hundred people will check in in the morning start filing through, checking emails, looking at, uh, uh, listening to telephone calls. But inside Israel, no one's talking. I haven't heard about, about Urim. I don't know what the word base refers to. I don't know exactly what uh, is the reason behind the focus, if there is a focus on this particular one. It's just a platform. You have to understand that when you come to, it comes to intelligence, At least 25,000 people marched through Berlin in the biggest protest of its kind over the food and agricultural policies. Their slogan was, we are fed up. Fed up with GM food, factory farming and mass production. A message for agriculture ministers from all over the world who were in the city for the International Green Week and an agricultural summit. In the light of the recent dioxin scandal, Agricultural Minister Eigner has been under a lot of criticism recently and today's demonstration rallying thousands of people is again proof that German citizens are fed up with genetically modified crops and food. More than 120 groups representing farmers, animal rights activists and food businesses called for the demonstration, demanding a shift in agricultural politics. The agriculture minister must perform her duties. We should build new farms that shut them down like those 10,000 closed last year. We want policies that are fair and environment friendly, not those that lead the country towards intensive farming. The demonstrators demanded further subsidies and financial support for traditional and environmentally friendly farming rather than for industrial agriculture, GM crops and factories. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, January 24th, 2011, and I'm Darko. Uh, new listeners, please visit my website, www.ggnonline.com, ggnonline.com. I have like almost a day left, if that, uh, with my poll about the extra extraterrestrial or inv alien invasion, and then it'll, it'll be removed. Um, I've had like, what, I think it was like 25, almost 25 people so far, so check that out. All right, um, so welcome to the War on Terror, Liberty, Sovereignty news segment, and uh, anything that pertains to the War on uh, war, war of Terror, Reign of Terror, uh, a war on our liberty or our sovereignty will be included in this video. Um, so the first article that we're going to cover here is Muscovites hold anti-fascism rally. Uh, rights activists have held a protest rally in the Russia capital on the second anniversary of slaying the slaying of a lawyer and journalist it says hundreds of people marched downtown Moscow on Wednesday carrying photographs of human rights lawyer uh, Stanislav Merkulov and journalist Anastasia Berberova and chanted slogans a against fascism, a press TV correspondent reported. And uh, keep moving here. It's a lot of protests uh, going on in the world, man, really. I mean, there's like so many places right now are just hotbeds with uh, revolution. And it almost makes me wonder if this is all staged. You know, it's like when I see this happening globally all at the same time, that usually is a telltale sign that this is all manufactured, right? 
um, stage, right? Um, it's not hard to create political instability. The powers that be know how to do it. They use their uh, international intelligence agencies to create these uh, provoca uh, to basically to use provocateurs, government provocateurs or paid clandestines to uh, agitate uh, and uh, basically uh, do what they're doing here. But uh, there's a lot of stuff going on that uh, would cause these riots and these protests. So. It could be legitimate. We'll see. Uh, Sudanese police clash with protesters. Police forces in the Sudan have clashed with supporters of the country's prominent opposition leader, Hassan al Tarabi in the capital city of Karantum. Said hundreds of protesters outraged with uh, Tarabi's detention took to the streets on Wednesday and called on the government to release the leader of popular Congress party immediately. Reuters reported. Next up is Peruvian police clash with squatters. Hundreds of police and security forces in Peru have clashed with a squatter community to force them out of privately owned land lots near the capital of Lima. And so next we have, uh, what is this, uh, Azerbani Muslims protest the hijab ban. And it says, um, Hundreds of people have staged a demonstration in the Azerbaijan's capital, urging the government to overturn a decree uh, banning Islamic hand scars in schools. So uh, next up, an article from the Washington Post titled, Protesters Clash with Police in Albania, Three Killed, Thousands of People Held in an Anti-Government Demonstration in Albania's capital on Friday, and at least three people were killed and scores wounded as police using tear gas, rubber bullets, and water cannons clashed with protesters. And... Um, yeah, this this is a big word that's being used, anti-government. That means that you oppose government. Most of these people don't oppose government, like you saw in that video with the Germans protesting uh, uh, protesting the factory farms and GMO crops. They weren't against the government. They weren't anti-government. They were actually looking to the government for subsidies. So you have to look out for that term that they use because I think that as we get closer and closer uh, to whatever they have planned, the powers that be, and uh, these government intelligence agencies and whatnot, and these uh, think tanks like Rand Corporation, all these councils and that, um, that they want to put freemen, anarchists, and um, uh, patriots, Christians, and they want to put them all in this one box, and they want to just basically demonize them. And uh, that's how I see it. And so, you know, if you're going to say anti-government, you might as well just say anarchists. And uh, it's not bad to be an anarchist, because I am. Tunisians urge interim prime minister to quit. It says here, as unrest spreads across the volatile Tunisia, protesters are mounting pressure on the country's prime minister, Mohamed uh, Ghanouchi, and his ca cabinet to quit. So uh, we have police officers hold protests in Tunisia. So you got the cops protesting in Tunisia. Next up, Tunisian protest tear gas. Teachers strike. The Tunisian uh, police fired tear gas, and protesters smash police cars as tensions resume Monday in the capital of the uh, country struggling to stabilize itself after the president was overthrown. And then they put in this, quote, unity government. What a hunk of crap, right? Unity government. <laughs> the people actually smelled them out right away, dude. Just like right off the bat. They're like, no, we don't want you either. You guys are pieces of scum crap, so please leave. Police clash with protesters in Algiers. Hundreds of Algerians have defied or defied a ban to stage protest rallies in the capital, Algiers, amid fears that the Tunisian example might repeat itself in the country. The protest comes days after a historic revolution in neighboring Tunisia ousted President Zain El uh, Abidin Ben Ali. So that's why I'm wondering if this is staged. So students clash with Police in the Netherlands, a demonstration by Dutch students, has turned violent briefly after they clashed with riot police outside Parliament in protests at education spending cuts. Three protesters killed in clashes in Tirana. Albania's riot police have killed three people during clashes with at least 20,000 opposition supporters outside Prime Minister Salih Berisha's office in Tirana. It says, or Tirana, sorry, anti-war demos held in Germany. It says here, anti-war pressures have poured into the streets of Berlin to call for an immediate end to Germany's military involvement in the war in Afghanistan. And their uh, NATO is losing a lot of support as far as the Afghan war. Uh, Germans and uh, Japanese and uh, there's a Polish uh, soldier that was killed. I don't think the Poles are too enthusiastic about their duty over there either. Uh, Egypt to face Tunisian-inspired protests. So the Egyptians plan to mark Tuesday's holiday honoring the much-feared police force with protests being organized through Twitter and Facebook, where 80,000 Egyptians have logged their support. It says here, uh, El Barade warns of revolution in Egypt. 
Egyptian opposition figure Mohammed El Baradi has warned of, quote, Tunisia-style explosions in his country as the nation gears up for massive protest. Yemeni students urge president's exit, and it says here, drawing inspiration from revolution in Tunisia, uh, hundreds of Yemeni students have staged rival protests against and in favor of the country's president, Ali Abdullah Saleh. So who knows, maybe this is part of that uh, staged, uh, fabricated, manufactured end times apocalypse scenario um, where it's basically going to be a holy war and they're going to have the second coming of Christ. They're going to use his DNA to basically bring him back and they'll say, ooh, see the shrouded trend. We use the, the blood and the DNA and a match. See, JC's back and alive and kicking and they'll bring him back and they'll use holographic images and put them in the sky like Project uh, Blue Beam and show Allah and then they'll create this uh, whole holy war. They'll create the famines like they're creating right now with the food prices. They'll create plagues, whatever they want to do with the bird flu, avian flu, whatever they create, happen to create in a lab or uh, even with this BP disaster, who knows. I'm uh, reading stuff about uh, mutant uh, bacteria eating organisms uh, being used along with core exit and those things basically wreaking havoc on the ecosystem in the ocean. So God only knows what the heck they're doing. Um, but we'll see. That's why I said it's interesting times. Yemen president blasts succession claims. Yemen's president blasted opposition claims of a planned handover of power to his son, describing such talks as, quote, the utmost rudeness and insisting there will be no father to son succession in his country. Tasmanian premier, premier David Bartlett announces resignation. So a lot of this going on, guys stepping down, leaders stepping down. Tasmanian Premier David Bartlett resigns, says he wants to be a better dad, pays way for state's first female premier. So there you go. Israel, Israel cabinet to collapse, says ex-minister, an Israeli politician and former minister, has predicted the breaking apart of Israel's cabinet on the back of expected indictment of foreign minister Avidor Lieberman. Says here, Portugal's president wins second term. Portugal's or Portuguese president uh, Anibal Cavaco Silva has won the first round of presidential election, uh, heading for another five-year term in office. Iraq victims' families outrage at Blair. The families of the British soldiers killed in Iraq slammed Tony Blair at the Iraq inquiry as he moved to apologize for his wrong decision to become involved in a war which cost hundreds of thousands of lives. Chavez, this is funny, well not really for the Venezuelans, but I will be president until 2019. Says so Venezuelan uh, President Hugo Chavez has said that he would be the country's leader for another eight years as he sees himself as the winner of the 2012 presidential election. So it says, I will be elected in December 2012. Uh, it is written, Chavez told thousands of his supporters in the capital of Caracas on the National Democracy Day, National Democracy Day on Sunday as he sought a mandate for another six-year term in office and the next presidential election, the AFP reported. Okay, judge bans ex-ruler to leave Haiti. Talking about Baby Doc, former Haitian dictator Jean-Claude Duvillier, uh, known as Baby Doc, has been banned from leaving the country following his return after 24 years. So a flight ban has been issued against De uh, Duvillier, and uh, he is barred from leaving the country because there is a court order against him. An unnamed Haitian was quoted as saying by AFP on Thursday, Police fired tear gas after Dhaka, Bangla uh, Bangladesh trading halted again. On Thursday, police in Bangladesh's uh, capital city used batons and fired tear gas to break up violent protests by hundreds of stock investors. Wow. The violent outbreak came after stock prices collapsed again, halting trading for a fourth day this month. So, man, that's, that's, like I said, that's definitely uh, a hotbed right there, Bangladesh. Dutch students clashed with police. And uh, police says here, police clashed with protesters outside the Dutch parliament in The Hague. At least 11,000 demonstrators showed up on Friday angry about spending cuts to education as part of the government's multi-billion euro austerity package. It says here, Afghan parliament deal still tentative. And it says here, Afghan's president resisted demands from winning parliamentary candidates Sunday to dissolve a tribunal investigating alleged election fraud, potentially undercutting a deal in which he agreed to inaugurate the legislature this week. All right, so finishing up here, Belgians protest seven-month political crisis. Tens of thousands of Belgians have protested against a prolonged political impasse gripping the country since parliamentary, parliamentary elections last year. So next up we have poll. Half of Italians want uh, Berlusconi out. Reds hold anti-government rally in Bangkok, Thailand. Thousands protest in Berlin over dioxin scandal. And says here Hezbollah backed uh, Makati set to lead Lebanon government. Please join me in part two of this War on Terror, Liberty, Sovereignty News segment. This is GGN, and I'm Darko.